Dear friend, congratulations on your decision to propose to your girlfriend. It's a big step, but if you feel ready, it's worth taking. Make sure the timing feels right for both of you and choose a meaningful location for the proposal. Speak from your heart when you ask her, expressing why you love her and want to spend your life with her. Keep it personal and sincere. Consider her preferences and what would make her happy when planning the proposal. And most importantly, be prepared for any response. Whether she says yes or no, remember that your love and commitment are what matter most. Good luck. Recently, I had the pleasure of trying a traditional Korean dish called bibimbap at a local Korean restaurant. My friend introduced it to me, eager for me to experience the flavors of Korean cuisine. Bibimbap is a colorful mix of rice, vegetables like spinach, carrots, bean sprouts and mushrooms, topped with a fried egg and a spicy sweet chili paste called gochujang. When all the ingredients are mixed together, it creates a burst of flavors and textures. I was pleasantly surprised by how delicious it was. The combination of fresh of fresh vegetables, savory meat, and spicy sauce was both satisfying and refreshing. It's definitely a dish I'll be ordering again in the future. In the picture, there's a vibrant beach scene with lots of children having fun. 
two kids are happily swimming with float tubes, while a girl relaxes under an umbrella nearby. Another girl is engrossed in playing with sand, and in the background, two kids are building sandcastles. A boy and a girl are seen holding hands and strolling along the shore. Towards the right, a boy and a girl are energetically kicking a football around, and there's a portable swimming pool where a boy is enjoying a splash. Lastly, a girl is joyfully flying a kite overhead. It's a lively and cheerful scene, scene, with each child immersed in their own playful activities, creating a delightful atmosphere of summer fun at the beach. Based on the current activities depicted in the picture, the children may continue to enjoy their beach day by engaging in more playful activities. The kids swimming with float tubes might decide to explore deeper waters, while those playing with sand could build even bigger and more intricate sand. The boy and girl holding hands may wander further down the beach, exploring new areas together. Additionally, the children playing football might organize a friendly match, and the boy in the portable swimming pool could invite others to join him for a swim. The girl flying the kite may try different, tri different tricks or let it soar even higher into the sky. Overall, the scene suggests a day filled with endless possibilities for fun and adventure at the beach.
Dear Mr. Adam, I've been thinking about the team building exercise, and I wanted to share why I believe the beach option is the way to go. First off, picture this a sunny day, toes in the sand, and delicious food from Cambo's Italian restaurant. It's a relaxed atmosphere perfect for bonding. Plus, a game of beach volleyball is a fun way to get everyone involved and active. Now, let's compare it to the mountain retreat. While the hike and views might be nice, not everyone enjoys hiking, and it can be tiring. The obstacle course sounds exciting, but it might be too, inten too intense for some team members. At the beach, we can unwind, have a laugh, and build connections in a laid-back setting. It's inclusive and enjoyable for everyone. What do you think? Looking forward to your thoughts. Dear Mr. Nick, I wanted to talk to you about a personal request that's come my way. My friend is involved with a volunteer group, and he is in need of some assistance with his income taxes. Given my background in accounting, he has asked if I could lend a hand, and he is not in a position to pay for professional services. I understand our firm's policy regarding outside work, and I respect it completely. However, this feels like a unique opportunity to support a cause close to my friend's heart and to give back to the community in a meaningful way. Rest assured, I'll ensure that there's no conflict of interest, conflict of interest or breach of confidentiality. I'd appreciate your understanding and any guidance you might have on navigating this situation within our firm's policies. Dear friend, I wanted to talk to you about the favor you asked for regarding the organization's income taxes. I was really eager to help out, especially since it's such a great cause and you're putting in so much effort. However, I checked with a colleague at work, and it's out that helping with taxes outside of my job is against the company's policy. I didn't realize this before, but apparently... It's a strict rule we have to follow. They do this to avoid any conflicts of interest and to make sure all work is done through official channels. I feel bad, bad that I can't assist you with this, especially since you're volunteering your time. I hope you understand that my hands are tied because of the company's rules. I still want to support you and your group in any other way I can. Maybe I can help you find another accountant who can do this, or perhaps assist, assist with some other tasks. 
let me know what you think. And I'm really sorry I can't be of more help with the taxes. Online learning and in-person learning each have their strengths. Online learning is convenient because you can study from anywhere and often at any time. This flexibility is great for people who have jobs, families, or other commitments. It also allows access to a wide range of courses that not be available locally. However, in-person learning offers direct interaction with teachers and classmates. This can make it easier to ask questions and get immediate feedback. It also helps build social skills and a sense of community. Online learning can sometimes feel isolating, and technical issues can, technical issues can be frustrating. In-person learning usually avoids these problems, but can be less flexible. So online learning is better for flexibility and access to resources, while in-person learning is better for personal interaction and immediate support. The best choice depends on individual needs and learning styles.
Hey, Robin, I'm at the park, and you wouldn't believe what the kids here are up to. They're making a hot air balloon, and it's bright yellow. There are four of them, two boys and two girls, all sitting on the ground and working together. One of the boys is holding the hot air balloon, making sure it's steady, while the girls are taking care of the black basket that has some yellow material inside it. It looks like they're having a blast, figuring everything out and working as a team. I thought you might want to join them. It looks like a lot of fun and a cool way to spend the afternoon. Do you want to come over and help them out? Come over and help them out with the balloon? I'm sure they'd be happy to have you join in on the project. Let me know if you're interested.